Hello, welcome to Terry TV, starring me, Terry Arden. How are you? How are you? Um, uh, I'm a Disney Imagineer. I'm known as a pop icon, okay? So I'm a legendary Imagineer. Uh, I have been in over, oh gosh, 40 some odd movies, movies, television commercials. You might not have seen my face, but you've seen my work. Ghostbusters, Men in Black, Indian in the Cupboard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And last night was my night. Yes, I really get excited for the Academy Awards, good and bad. I never miss it. I haven't missed it since I was three years old. If I missed it one time because I was sick in the hospital, I made sure my family recorded it. A little hors d'oeuvre from the Academy, so I just ate it for emphasis. I promise not to eat in front of you anymore today, but I will have my tea. It's like having dinner with Terry, isn't it? Lunch with Terry. How are you? Did you see the Academy Awards? Best show ever. Really a good show. Jimmy Kimmel. Might even watch your late night show after that one. Really, really a good show. Such dignity, such grace. Uh, I have to point out that uh, Jimmy Kimmel a lot of times will call out that elephant in the room and sometimes just blatantly much like myself sometimes but uh this time i gotta tell you he really handled it with uh real elegance just did a great job uh addressed the slap incident went ahead and 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 that was one of my favorite sequences actually guys mm -hmm. if you got to see it in the beginning he said if you dare to come up because you're upset about something i've said and want to do me some physical harm for any reason, uh, you won't be able to. And he shows the a picture of he he the camera goes to the rock is going to be in in between you and the guy who just got his star on Hollywood Boulevard. He's going to be and Michelle Yao is going to be there and she was like doing this and she looked great and and just all kinds of guys. In fact, they went to Guillermo, even Guillermo will be there and they cut to Guillermo del Toro who smiled and, and 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 laughed and then they said not that Guillermo this Guillermo and this Guillermo very popular guy gave his meanest and scariest face everyone was there to have fun to enjoy themselves 99.9% .9 of the dresses were nice and then there was that 1% that were just what were you thinking do you own a mirror this is one of the reasons that I, Terry Harden, do not sit in a group and watch the Academy Awards under any circumstances. This is my joy, is to be terribly verbal. This is my Super Bowl, where if you are someone who likes sports, and I know there's a lot of you out there, and your team is doing something stupid, or the ref does so, ah, referee, this is me with the Academy Awards. I absolutely lose it. When I see someone come down the aisle in a dress that looks like a tube dress, uh, i.e. the costumer for Wakanda, here is a brilliant, brilliant woman who looked like, oh my God, I don't have a dress to wear. Grab that yellow fabric and wrap me up in it. Just a terrible, terrible design. Now, note to the costumer, okay? And she you know, may find me someday and say, you dissed my dress. And I'm going to say, yes, I did, because you got to really kill it when you're the customer. This is what you do. And you did this beautiful, beautiful work on Wakanda, and then you show up in this yellow tube. And uh, I, I got to tell you, it looks awful. It did not. I mean, it was like, I don't want anybody to see see my figure i don't i don't know what you were saying with this dress but it was awful color beautiful dress eh. so let me give you a suggestion because i'm not here to be nothing but dissing you and dissing the problems what a brilliant woman you are as far as being the customer but let me tell you something if you don't have time to make yourself a dress and believe me i am a doll puppet toy maker and a costume uh, cosplayer myself. When was the last time I had time to do a cosplay outfit for myself? I think it's counting on years. So I get it. I feel you. But how about someone that you've seen, a rising uh, young costumer that you think is cool, that you maybe have mentored, 
or someone you find special. Let them design your dress while you continue to work on what you work on. Because I get it, you're busy. But how lovely for this young girl or guy to have the opportunity to see their dress on stage while you accept the award. So this is my suggestion to you, like you watch my channel. That's a, a snowball's chance and you know what. But I always am the positive. I'm a glass half full girl. So hopefully you'll catch this because uh, uh, your brilliance is good, but it's like me as a puppeteer. If I show up with just a sock and no eyes, people are going to go, what is she doing? She's a puppeteer and she's won the award for the master of puppetry or whatever it is. You got to pull out all the stops when you are the costume designer. Okay. You just got to, you just got to, you may remember the dress of a costume designer for a movie called, uh, oh, and see, I get, it's right there in my head right away. And I get all excited about the movie, but the one that the country bears got the bus from, it'll come to me. But, uh, uh, she showed up in a dress that was made out of American Express gold cards. Do you remember this dress? If you are an Academy Award aficionado like me, you're going to go remember that stunning, stunning. And then she wins. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. That might have been the movie. Anyway, she wins or almost famous. Anyway, one of those. And she wins and she goes up in this dress. Her dress when she came up with the idea because she didn't wait till the last minute um and and honestly you're busy she just this was important to her to be up there and really kill it because she's what the costume designer so she got together with american express and american express brought her just like james bond in a handcuff with a suitcase the american express cards with no numbers on them and she did this entire dress google it i hope it's up there uh, look for it on YouTube. Stunning, stunning. People couldn't stop talking about it. And that's what you want to happen because you're what? Say it for me. The costume designer. Okay. So uh, you deserved it. Believe me. I'm not saying you didn't deserve it. Another thing I want to give you with love. Don't read your script. I don't care how sincere it is. Don't read it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, read through it. I know that you've had a loss and boy, my heart goes out to you. Uh, I'm dealing with some challenges with my dad right now. Um, and uh, and uh, that's always on the back of my head. So I know you attending might have been a little challenging for you. So I feel you. But you had the opportunity, for, you know, when you looked away from that piece of paper last night and you spoke from your heart, that was my favorite part. And I know that was a favorite part of a lot of people because reading just reading just is reading. You know, we expect it of the presenters because the presenters um, you know, they, they have to be able to stay on point. So they have to have a script, but you, you don't need one. We were there to hear your heart. And unfortunately you were surrounded by heart spoken people all night at the Academy Awards, which is what made it so special. Everything everywhere all at once was not my movie. I did not like it. It was not my cup of tea. Yes, you heard me right. But what I will tell you, I was very happy it won because it contains one of the most beautiful casts, one of the greatest group of people. You could tell they had fun on the movie. They love each other like family. They're going to go to dinner after the movie. They're going to watch each other's careers. This is why a person becomes an actor. They want not only a chance to step into someone else's skin and create a character and, and, and play act, which I love as a character actor, but they also want a set that's fun, enjoyable, and you just can't wait to get up in the morning and go to work. Many movies are not like that. Many movies are painful and stressful. You've heard that a lot of Cameron films are toxic. Not this one. Way of Water, Cameron was a love, people said. They used supportive and kind. Now, Guillermo del Toro says this is because Cameron has children. Children make you wake up. Children are affected by your behaviors, affected by what they hear in the, in the world, are blunt, are straightforward, and often mean. 
But there's someone that you as a parent really want to do well by, as Guillermo said and shared with Cameron. And Cameron said he felt that, yeah, he realized he wanted to get back to more of the of the person he was when he first was making films because a lot of people said his sets were very toxic and no one wants to work on a toxic set. That is for sure. But this one, uh, way of water was not toxic. Everybody said it was a joy. He was supportive. He was lovely. Unfortunately, I hate to say it. He wasn't there. And that was too bad. Um, I guess sometimes you don't want a bunch of people talking to you about the same, asking you the same question. Why weren't you nominated for Avatar? Why weren't you nominated? Why weren't you nominated? Why don't you have a best director nomination? That can get tedious, old, and boring, by the way. But I'll tell you, I still think as a whole, this is my theory again, that the Academy Awards is not quite sure how to embrace a film like Avatar Way of Water, it's, it's, it's performance capturing and many technicians call it motion capturing, but actors say performance capturing because they're not just moving. They're performing under these little balls and dots and, and costumes. A lot of work went into this film and the direction was beautiful. And I think that Cameron should have been nominated for director. I really do. But the Academy chooses what the Academy chooses, and this is what makes them so beautiful. They are not affected by other award shows. They judge, they pick for themselves. A perfect example is the RRR song. Not to, not to, not to, not to, not to, not to. I mean, how can you not sing this? How can you not dance with this? And how can you not love this movie? Uh, this is a movie that uh, I just went gaga over. Um, and how do you like that phrase? Because Lady Gaga was brilliant too. I uh, just love this movie. Energy, excitement. If you are feeling down, put this movie on and just give over to it. That's one of the things about Indian films that I absolutely love. Uh, when, those that I've gotten to see is the energy, the joy, the celebration of life that they all seem to do. And yet there's also a heartfelt message Love these movies. One of my favorite genres and uh, more crossover, more crossover. Yeah, just fantastic. Just beautiful. Just, woo! Uh, again, Jimmy Kimmel subtly talking about certain things that happened in the previous Academy Awards and also openly uh, hitting a mark that I know he wanted to, uh, but he did it well and he did it mostly with uh, uh, you had to think he was an announcer where you had to, some of the things that he said, some of you are going to have to think, uh, we thought he was quite brilliant and congratulations to Jimmy Kimmel for doing one of the best, uh, hostings we've seen in a long, ah, this person has seen in a long time. My husband actually watched it with me. Uh, even though I screamed at the woman who was wearing a shower curtain dress and pulled the curtain back to show that she was in some sort of bathing suit or panties or something. Really? Just because they're black, we don't need to see them, sister. Also, I've got to address the woman in the audience who had the audacity to wear this big white thing on top of her head and be in a place that people had to struggle to see the people on the stage. Not cool, not kind, very narcissistic in my opinion. I really don't care that you had something to do with the song for Wakanda Forever. I'm sure you're very talented, but when it comes to thinking about the dress you're going to wear, take that whatever it was off, okay? Or sit at the back row. Personally, I think they should have put you in the back row because it's not fair. People work hard to be on that main floor of the Academy Awards. That's a privilege. You know, this is why you saw people speaking and saying, my kids, my mom, they're up there, you know, because you can't have the whole family down there with you. You can have one person, you know, and let me tell you, if you're married, it better be your wife. So you and your wife are sitting down and then your family is up there, but your family at least gets to attend. So please don't be this narcissistic person who, who it just comes off as you think you're better than everybody else. You may not think this. I don't think you do, but you didn't think is my point. So get that off your head. Um, 
whatever it was, erase it, bring scissors, cut it. I don't care. Do something for someone else and let them be able to see the show. Really, really not cool, um, in my opinion. And of course, my opinion. It's Terry TV. So of course, it's my opinion. Yay to Michelle Yo for her speech. Someone who want, who is all about diversity and like me about diversity, but she didn't get preachy, did she? She really said it nicely for all the little girls that out there that look like me, this is attainable. But personally, for all little girls out there, for all little girls of every color, which is what I think she was really saying, this is your dream. Don't give it up. You can do this. Look what I, look, 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 look. Um, and, uh, the idea that Hong Kong is watching, you know, I have loved Michelle since she was, uh, uh, first in films and really got to know her in the Jackie Chan films. And, uh, she just is, she was the, 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 oh, she's just, I love her. I, I watched her, her films, her Chinese made films for years as a little girl, just looked for her everywhere because she was so amazing. And then of course, many of you saw her in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, very nice film, but that's honestly old hat compared to all of us who saw the films of, uh, you know, those films as children, because guys, that, that, that uh, terminology, and I'm going to tell you the terminology, which is, this is the terminology, okay? So don't, you know, woo-woo me or woo-hoo me or whatever that word is. It was called chopsaki back in the day, meaning it was kung fu films out of Asia. But we had to actually address them this way in order when we went down to like a little Tokyo or to a Chinatown to find out where we could get these films because they were not attainable in the U.S. for a great long time. And my dad and I love them because of the talented acrobatics, precision skill it took to make these films. We love films with great skill. And these movies, although in some cases you might have thought were silly, were fantastic to watch because the choreography, which takes a lot, the endurance, which takes a lot, was incredible. And Michelle was right in the middle of it doing it. She may not have had formal training before she got in the movies doing her Kung Fu martial arts, but she learned on the set. And that's the most fun way to learn, I think. Um, she did some great stuff because, you know, Jackie Chan always pushes the envelope in his films. Now that he's getting older, of course, he's feeling the, the pain of it. But boy, when he was young, he was always, you know, they always did a, 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 a credits of all of the, the bones he'd broken or the fall he's taken because he was always pushing the envelope, uh, envelope doing these really cool films. If you haven't seen films like Drunken Master and stuff like that, you got to go back and revisit them for Jackie and also look for ones that Michelle was in because she's brilliant. Anyway, this woman is a brilliant actress, beautiful in almost everything she does. And uh, wow, so excited when she won, wanted her to win. I got to be honest, uh, even though the movie was not my cup of tea, I wanted her to win, as did Jamie Lee Curtis. How beautiful was Jamie Lee Curtis when she said anyone who saw her in her beginnings, which was me, loved her in all those Scream Queen movies, one of the most wholesome, beautiful, wonderful women in there, always my favorite uh, lead character in Jeopardy. She was real. She was beautiful. She was pure, lovely, charming. You know, when she says Ben Tramer is the one that she uh, she has a crush on. All of us have a Ben Tramer where we're too shy to even speak. So those you go back and watch those movies, but watch Jamie. She's so brilliant. And so this is something I don't know if she ever thought was going to happen but uh, she's been winning awards throughout. Many people have said she's the best speech giver of all. And she did not disappoint last night at the Academy Awards. If you haven't seen it, put the news on. They're all going to feature her because she, she just so, she did such a nice job. She, she really did. And she, she was loving. And then we cannot say, I can't say his name, but the one who played the father in, um, Everything Everywhere, forgive me. I don't want to destroy your name, but you know who I am. 
uh, you know who you are because that smile, that crying, that genuine excitement of having an Academy Award and speaking to your mom, that's what we eat up, guys, okay? We love this story. So uh, you didn't disappoint. And uh, one of the things that we could tell is that you were all so grateful, including the beautiful young lady who played the daughter who had an amazing dress. I don't know how that dress, does that detach? That skirt was incredible. Um, but anyway, she uh, crying for everybody. I don't think she stopped crying during the whole, sh whole show because she cried for all her colleagues. And it won seven times. So that's a lot of crying, guys. Uh, but she just was fantastic. Very supportive. You can just see they all loved each other very, very much. Um, on my Patreon page today with Terry's Tribe, we spoke about, what's that? Oh, yes, I should tell you about Terry's Tribe. Thank you for reminding me. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden is where Terry's Tribe resides. For $5 a month, uh, you can be a part of it. Dip a toe in for five bucks. And if you don't like it, come back out. But I expect you to have skin in the game. So I thank you. You put some in, I'll put some in. And we talk about all things, things we can't talk about here on the public channel. And also we help each other. We're upbeat. We're like-minded people, highly spirited, happy, go lucky people. So uh, I hope you'll consider joining us, even if it's just to test us out for a month. Here's where you go. And uh, thank you for that really, really appreciate in uh, monumental levels. Uh, we'll say that, uh, uh, you know, we were discussing several things that 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 uh, were happening today. I mean, there's this young, lovely young lady and the speeches and one of the people said, you know, there's a group and they all don't get to speak. No, um, the Academy is really about time. And uh, they always go over by half an hour. In fact, today I suggested to the Academy that they actually secretly add a half an hour and then just don't tell the people who are speaking, say we're going over, going over, and then they'll be on time. You see now I can go over. So uh, is it a wonder that others um, do not as well? What you have to decide if you're a group and you're going to go up, should you win, is to look out after each other. Again, everywhere, ev everything everywhere did this very well with the two directors. Now, understand that the two directors have been winning. They've had chances to improve their speeches, but they alternated, like right up front. Spoke a little, spoke a little, talk a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little. Uh, but the point is that you got to look out for each other because if one speaks and then the other comes up to speak, they could get cut. Okay, this is the knowledge of being uh, watching the Academy Awards since I was three years old. So what happens is you got to throw the ball back and forth. Okay, like you're 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 tossing the ball back and forth, or you're playing ping pong. But it's got to be oh my goodness and my family and oh me too, my family and we love you and that sort of thing. That's what they did, and they did it very well. So in the future, if you're going to win an Academy Award, you're part of a group. Replay the sequence between these two guys. They did it all night. In fact, at the end, uh, they both stepped back and said, let's let somebody else do it. Unfortunately, that's a little more difficult to do because they cut it, okay? They will cut it the minute there's a pause. So you've got to figure out how you can do it so other people can speak. You're going to have to chore direct it and chore choreograph it just like you do when you're doing a film if you want to be able for them to speak because they won't cut in the middle but uh if you aren't on it you won't do it so one person speaking and then stepping back for someone else to speak no not going to happen as you saw cut 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 that's what they were up to and that's what they were doing so uh so yeah but we did get to see some lovely heartfelt speeches and uh every single one was was just so fabulous. And then, of course, the best for last, in my opinion, Brendan Fraser winning for Best Actor and Whale. A uh, couple of wins there. The makeup uh, around the face of Brendan was digital. And like I said before, a lot of us in the Academy, a lot of people in the Academy, I'm not in the Academy, but the Academy still is under trying to, to put their head around this digital stuff. So it's going to take a little while for them to really embrace digital filmmaking and uh, the, 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 di you know, the digitization of characters, actors, and figures and stuff to realize there is a place for you. It's just going to be a little different. Um, and so uh, that's going to take some time, but in the case of uh, the whale, 
this so this was so Brendan Fraser could emote and feel free in this area of his face to emote and give the performance that he gave is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And how lovely he, he reached out to his, uh, to uh, the supporting actors. I agree. I loved her performance. I thought she was absolutely excellent. It's a shame. She was up. Uh, she had to share the nominations, you know, she had to be nominated at the same time. Jamie Lee Curtis was because Jamie Lee Curtis was way overdue for uh, recognition her, her, and, and to do such a different role was very, was very, very important to all of us. So uh, it was great for her not to dish your performance. Your performance was brilliant in the whale. And actually you took my vote. If uh, for some reason the Academy said no to Jamie, which I just didn't see it happening. But, uh, but I thought, you know, the good thing is you're a young actress and oh my goodness, to be so strong and so beautiful and do such an amazing job interesting the 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 cuts that they picked because i actually think i like your your performance when you're just sitting there listening to brendan talking about people i thought you you did such a good job and it's in the the preview for the trailer and i really think that's what truly sells the trailer besides the fact me loving brendan fraser as much as i do having worked with him on several films and uh and cheering for my friend bruce lanoyo who worked even more uh, closely with Brendan on films because he was more of a lead character and I am a uh, salt and pepper character, meaning a character actress, not apologizing. That's what I love to do. I always shoot for supporting leads just don't really interest me. Uh, but then you got people like Michelle Yeoh showing you that you can be a lead and be have a really fun opening lead. And then Brendan just acting and congratulations. If you haven't seen Gods and Monsters or you didn't believe that the Encino Man really had acting chops, then I, I highly recommend that you see Gods and Monsters. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. See Gods and Monsters. You will see what a strong uh, actor this young man really was from the very beginning. And now he's finally got an Academy Award to show for his, what I say, body of work. So uh, that was a beautiful film too. Uh, I screamed and yelled for that and best song from RRR, which uh, like I said before, was one of my favorite movies. Guillermo del Toro won for Pinocchio. Of course he did. It was brilliant. So um, very, very happy about that. And the team, and you notice that Guillermo uh, let the other director the co-director, I don't even know if that's right, Guillermo del Toro, forgive me, um, the director that directed it with Guillermo del Toro, let me say it like that, They he let him speak first. This is the deal, okay? Because Guillermo knows that you let this man speak first and they will wait for Guillermo to speak. You understand? Everybody wants to hear Guillermo speak. So Guillermo didn't go first, he went second. So this guy could have talk time, very heartfelt, very beautiful speech, and about the genre. Please keep the genre alive. And then Guillermo came in because they'll wait for Guillermo del Toro, won't they? They're not going to cut him off because he's the second guy. He's Guillermo del Toro. And Guillermo del Toro knows this. Smart. See, it, you got to think about these things. You know, if you're going to accept your Academy Award and don't laugh, because Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis and so many others told you it's possible. Keep your dream, including the uh, father from Everything Everywhere. And again, I'm not going to kill your name. But uh, including you, who said you almost gave up on your dream. And you didn't because the wife said, don't do it. And look where you are. Mwah. I'm so I'm, I'm so proud of you for saying that to everyone in the audience. You guys were so uplifting, so encouraging, so loving. And that is one thing I have to say about your film. It is made up of some of the cream of the creme of the crop. So I will always love everything everywhere for the people that it uh, it brought together to make this film. And I hope that that's what people take from this film as they go to try to make one like it. Make it a non-toxic environment, a fun environment where people can joyfully play and create and be silly at times. And uh, even him saying all these weirdos, you know, you loved all these weirdos. I agree. I loved all those weirdos. It just was not my cup of tea. It was a movie that just went places. I rathered it didn't. So for me, it didn't work. But 
it really had a great cast, a great group, really good people. And I can't wait to see them in where they're going to go from here. And I can't wait to see where the, what those directors do next. I will at least sit in the chair and see it. I don't think you should diss a film without seeing it. And I watched everything everywhere all at once twice to realize it wasn't that I hated the film. It was that it wasn't my cup of tea. So uh, that's different. That's very different. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a very popular film, is not my cup of tea either. So it's just different strokes for different folks, right? Right. So exciting, wonderful, thrilling. I have now talked for a half an hour. Let us let you tell me what you thought about the movie or, or about anything, but I thought the Academy, it should be Academy centric. Also, I wanted to talk about the Razzies really quickly. Hi, Bob. Good morning, Terry and fans. I wanted to, um, to speak about the Razzies. Uh, I really admire the Razzies for calling out Tom Hanks and his terrible accent. I think one of the reasons Elvis struggled was because you have to sit through Tom Hanks accents. I love Tom Hanks as an actor and I will always love Tom Hanks as an actor, but please Tom stop doing these accents. You cannot do it. Doesn't do well. And, and uh, a woman on KTLA five, one of my favorite, shows said you shouldn't be able to diss Tom Hanks. No, no, no. Don't ever think that way. Don't ever speak that way. People like Tom Hanks, I can't believe would love, wouldn't love someone to say, you know, Tom, don't do this, this one, don't do this accent. Just, just be you. Okay. He also was nominated for worst picture uh, in a Razzies, which was Disney's Pinocchio. Couldn't even get through that one. I'm afraid uh, that live action was painful. Um, but uh, yeah, and it wasn't necessarily Tom Hanks' fault with that one. It just was not good, that Disney film. But uh, the Razzies, if you see them, I think the Razzies called some really well. I think they made some good calls and they made some good reasons for their calls. I thought they were very good. Personally, if I ever got a Razzie, I'd be there accepting the award. These are some smart people. You see, without proper criticism, you can't progress you never want people like Tom Hanks to think they're so good they can they 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 don't need to work anymore. Not that Tom Hanks would do that because he's a hardworking actor. He always has been. He's also been producing and doing other things. He's a very busy person and he's a very dedicated uh, art actor and and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's dedicated, but I don't think people want to tell him the truth and don't don't do that to the man. Be, be be open, be frank, and be honest. Honest criticism. You're not saying it to be mean. You're saying it because it's true. That accent was atrocious. And don't give me some smarmy answer that that's the way the guy sounded. No, it was Tom Hanks doing a terrible accent. And Elvis suffered for it. Very hard to sit through the movie. Brilliant acting on the young man who played Elvis. Austin, amazing acting. Brilliant. But I say, thank God you're young because you will come again. You will be on that uh, theater again uh, with another nominated performance. I truly believe it. So we will see you again as the girl who played the daughter. We will see her again, too. So uh, fear not, young ones. You will. We will see you again. Those incredible performances did not go unnoticed, hence the nominations. But Tom, no more. If, you know, ask someone in your family who's going to tell you the truth. Is this ac accent working? And then listen to them, okay? Whoopi Goldberg. I've worked with her in three films. Brilliant woman. Some of you may like what she says. Some of you may don't. But the woman has an opinion, and that's a good thing, okay? Like it, don't like it. She's never soft on anything, which is what I love about her. But Whoopi Goldberg says, keep someone from your high school, your college, or someone who knew you before you were the icon that you are today that will tell you the truth, okay, to keep you grounded. Because if you start to believe your own press, you can go down that dark passage, which so many tell you happens with fame and fortune and celebrity, that uh, you need someone to keep you grounded. And Tom, um, I thought that was your wife. Are you not listening to your wife? She's a very good actress, you know, and she loves you. Maybe she told you, honey, really? You know, I don't know. But please listen to someone who you listen to and stop doing these terrible accents. Really, really hurts. 
it's so distracting. I can't watch your acting. And that really upsets me because you are so good as an actor. I don't want to be thinking about your accent. You know, I just don't. Okay. I don't. Um, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, but that should not be your excuse. Yeah. Never be your excuse. And before I, I go to your comments again, let me just do a shout out to Lady Gaga. Wow. Lady Gaga. Did you realize that they did a camera shot of Lady Gaga in the audience? Beautiful. Makeup in place, hair in place, everything great. And then she sang and that was all gone. It was all just Gaga in her natural loveliness. Did you notice that? Then she was going to have to go backstage and get dolled up again. I mean, she must have a hell of a team. But I really appreciated that when she sang that song. She really made it about the song. Don't you think so? She made it about the song, not her. She really is something. Wow. You guys who've seen her in concert, you must have really been impressed. Because she, she blows me away in the little time that she has. She continues to blow me away. What an amazing woman. I remember watching this horrible film, Gucci, and she was the only thing good in it. Everybody else was terrible. And she was just so, so good. So, oh, we're going to see that woman up on, we're going to see more with her. Um, love the idea of the, of the way she showed up when she sang that song. Um, really got to me. I usually fast forward through the songs because I'm not really into some of those songs. But she, <laughs> I replayed it because she just is, is just, uh, she's just remarkable. I cannot say how remarkable this person is over and over and over again. And uh, she made a statement that I thought was absolutely fantastic where uh, she talks about uh, before she said, sang the song, she wanted everyone to know that you can be your own hero, even if you're broken inside. I thought that was a very important statement. And she waited, she waited till the camera was, that she looked up just a little bit to tell you that you could be your own hero, even if you're broken inside. It's huge, it's huge, guys. Very good. Very, very good. You know, lead by example, be your own best hero, uh, go to heroes that you love. She's a hero of mine. I tell you, her picture's going up on my, my people who influence me well. I'll tell you what, she, she just really impressed me, especially last night. Um, I notice things like these things and, uh, uh, I don't need to tell you that because I just told you what I noticed, right? Don't you just, that drives you crazy, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, so I was very happy for Brendan, very, very happy for uh, Everything Everywhere all at once because that cast is remarkable. And if you see the after, it's a party. You know they were partying like it was 1999. They just didn't stop. They're probably still partying. And it's, what time is it, 1019? Yeah. Uh -huh. They must have had a really good time. And I all my love goes out to them because many of them are people I've admired, you know, for so long. What a great, what a great, uh, I love the ending of that movie, Everything Everywhere. That was my favorite part was the ending, which was the message. You know, if I watch it, I'll just go straight to the message because I, I just, the other stuff and Jamie Lee Curtis's performance is probably what I watch, but I basically am really going to watch the ending because that's where I think the strongest stuff happened, which is good because the third act usually fails in movies and that one really brings it home. So yay for that. Uh, also wanted to bring up, um, all Quiet on the Western Front. Whoa! If you haven't seen this movie, uh, my husband showed me how you can have it subtitled in English. So not subtitled, but uh, dubbed in English so that you don't have to read the German if that's something difficult for you to do. I always read the movie first, but now if I watch it again, I'll, I'll, I'll see it dubbed because I thought it was really good. And obviously, so did others. Uh, it really did some surprising upsets. Uh, RRR, as I told you, really made me happy. Very, very, very happy about that. And Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and his lovely shout out to, uh, Hung Cho. Is that how you say her name? Brilliant actress. Just beautiful. She was my favorite, but, uh, Jamie was incredible. It was so different from what she does. And that's what we look for. 
when you see an actor take a certain path and then they all of a sudden take this one that you like, where did that come from? Okay, now I know the Academy was saying that about Brendan Fraser, but if they saw Gods and Monsters, we all know where it came from. Finally got to let him show that side of him. And I'm really glad that they did because it really paid off uh, for all of us. But when you see someone take a turn and do something they've never done before, the one that really hits me in the head like a frying pan is Sling Blade. Billy Bob Thornton. I'll never forget. I try every time to see it. I've seen this movie a hundred times. I try to see a minute. I don't see it. A complete transformation and uh, a brilliant performance. And of course he did well with it, but uh, yeah, we like to see those, those, those reaches, you know, uh, Charlize Theron in uh, Monster and Halle Berry in Monster's Ball and all of these people who did a turn that's so different from what they usually do. Always a pleasure to see them do that and do that successfully. So last night, it was great to see the joy that uh, was happened during the film and the making of everything everywhere exuberate itself and just infect and, and inspire and in fact is the wrong word actually uh, too much of last of us I guess but just to, to give everyone that love they spread it the whole night made it so special so warm so fuzzy and wonderful even the terrible dresses were worth looking at no not really did you see the red one? Oh dear god the little mermaid trailer Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. That poor girl. What a beautiful, lovely girl. And what a hard job she has. Um, I they I watched the, the uh, new trailer for The Little Mermaid and all I could see was a human being struggling to duplicate that which had happened in the original Little Mermaid animation. Now, Guillermo del Toro said, Animation is ready to go to the next level. And he's absolutely right. Animation is the one, the thing I watch most of because they always have a good story nine times out of 10. Sometimes no, but a lot of times if I want a good story, I can always count on animation to give it to me. And so I'm constantly watching animated films. I love them and all walks of animated films I love. Uh, there are some I don't. Um, many that didn't don't hit me well, but many that do. And I, I love that that genre but animation pushes the envelope often so ariel the mermaid in the animation does two things that all the fans really love first of all she comes up and her hair goes like this and she's in silhouette and then the other one is when she gets on the rock and she arches her back well beyond what a spine can do. I'm meaning the spine going down your back. And so in the previews, all I did was watch this human girl struggle to duplicate these two moves. And she can't because she has what's called a real spine, real bones with real skin. They only stretch and move so far unless the girl is a contortionist, which she's not. She's a beautiful young singer. And her voice is beautiful and lovely. But all I saw was this poor girl struggling to duplicate these two things, which honestly shows me the movie's probably not going to be that good. How many times did they make that poor girl do that rock thing? You know there were take after take after take and trying to make her spine do that which a spine does not do. I mean, guys, really, Disney? Really? Really? I hope they don't, as I said to the tribe, I hope they don't make Ursula try to try to do what Ursula did in animation or we'll have the Joker on camera. Seriously, guys, live action. You should be doing your own live action version. And then just don't call it the Little Mermaid, okay? She's beautiful. She's wonderful. She's a mermaid. She looks good. But she can't bring anything to the part because you're making her trace. You know how... She probably will never say this. She said it on camera. Oh, what an honor. And it's great. But I don't know. I can't speak for her. But as an artist, I hate tracing. Okay. You know, I don't want to take 
somebody's good work and trace it and then say, here I am. Ah, here's my tracing. Beautiful. I trace to learn, to educate, to experience. And then I toss it and work on growing myself as an artist. I think we all do. Okay. But when we see someone trace Ralph Bakshi, we really weren't thrilled with Ralph Bakshi just photographing actors and then tracing them and calling it animation. I didn't like it. Maybe you did. And maybe you people are going, who the hell is Ralph Bakshi? There's a lot of young people here, so maybe you're doing that. Google it. Look it on YouTube. But he traced. He rotoscoped, which meant filming people in black and white. This is what Disney did quite a bit of. But Disney didn't trace. Disney used it as a teaching tool for their animators, and then they drew, okay? They didn't go looking for people for Snow White that had eyes that are wider than most people, okay? The reason Snow White's not sculpted well is because they sculpt her like a normal person. She is not. Uh, the eyes, if you want to know about sculpting, the eye, if you're sculpting, is usually, the eyes are usually, usually, usually one eye apart. Snow Whites are one and a half. Go look. Snow Whites are one and a half wide. Yeah. Yeah. So what am I trying to tell you? What I'm trying to tell you is that's how you can tell when an animator draws and when an animator traces. They're just, there's something about the art that's not, isn't authentic. Sorry, but it isn't right. Okay. So that's what it looks like. This preview, I haven't seen the movie and I will. This preview looks like they're forcing this young girl to trace every single thing that happened in the animated movie. And oh my goodness, really? You think the fans are really going to like that? I mean, you know, tell me in the comments if this is what you'd love to see is them trace your favorite animated film. You know, show of hands, please. Show of hands, please. In your comments. Because I personally don't want to. One of my favorite movies was Dumbo. I still haven't seen Tim Burton's version. I will not because I cannot unsee it. And the previews were so painful to me, I just couldn't do it. And I'm someone who watches a movie to tell you whether it's bad or good. But that one was so upsetting to me because Dumbo is a very special movie to me. I don't know if I told you, but as an actress, if I want to cry on cue, okay, actors will talk to you about what they do so that they can cry on cue. They won't use menthol or whatever they use. But in order to cry on cue, to actually put them in the moment, to actually get them to where they can actually cry, I sing Baby of Mine. And if you don't believe me, look closely. I'm already tearing up. All I have to do is visualize baby of mine. All I have to do is think about baby of mine. Keep speaking about baby of mine. And there it goes. So I would never, ever, ever see a movie that would destroy this in me and my soul. And I really hope that they did not use this girl. Look at that. See what I mean? Works every time. Every time it works. They want me to cry on cue. I sing baby of mine. Yep. True story. As I proved to you right here on camera today. But my point is this. If you love this movie, you're going to have to think if you're going to watch the live action. Because if it's going to spoil for you something that you treasure, something that's your baby, as I personally feel Dumbo is to me and Bambi. I'm not going to watch the live action ones if I think they're going to change it and make me hate it, hate the, you know, feel bad, feel like I'm getting a thorn in my side, right? I just won't. I won't do it, guys. I won't do it. So this movie I felt for this young lady because she's beautiful and she's she's so sweet and so lovely. And then she was standing next to a tomato at the Academy Awards. What the heck, lady? Just because you have a red. Just because you have a lot of red fabric, you doesn't mean you need to use every stitch of it. Oh, my goodness. She just looked like a giant tomato. Way too much red. And 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 and, and, and no form or fashion to it at all. And I, oh, it's so sad. And she's such a lovely woman. You may or may not know this, but designers would love to design something for you to get a chance for you to step and be a presenter at the Academy Awards, yeah? They'd kill for it. Really beautiful designers would kill to do this. So if you're someone who maybe doesn't have the budget because this is your first time getting nominated to the Academy Awards, you haven't built up that, you know, acting cachet of celebrity or whatever, or maybe you just don't know or what. I don't know the reasoning. I'm not going to make excuses for you. But if you cannot 
there are designers out there that are brilliant. I mean, I watch Project Runway. I watch Make the Cut. They are out there and they would love the opportunity. They would love it. They would probably do it for you for free just for, they would pay for it, you know? Now, they may not have the budget for it either, but it would be a collaboration. Wouldn't that be fun? Don't you think that would be a fun collaboration? You wouldn't have to go up looking like a giant tomato. You could go up looking cool. You know, don't tell me it's because of your body type. Don't tell me because it's, it, don't give me an excuse. You saw, you you know, don't tell me it's age. Don't tell me it's, I hear this all the time. Uh, you know, I got to wear this because I'm old. I got to wear this because I'm, I'm, I'm a little more curvy. I got to wear this. Those are excuses, guys. I'm going to tell you people who really rock it in all levels. Older woman, Angela Bassett. Wow. Okay. Queen Latifah, curvy girl. Whoa. Always looks amazing. Always. I mean, come on. You can do this. You can do this and not look like a giant tomato up there or wear a yellow tube outfit. In the case of the designer for Wakanda, I just think she was busy and she thought, I got to design my own thing. No, I, I, I would have picked a young person that was aspiring and really wanted to do it and let them, you know. If ever I am so honored with the opportunity for Academy Award, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look up a designer who needs a little, you know. I mean, seriously, why should it be about me? Doesn't Dior have enough? You know, doesn't doesn't the designers of the world that you want to do it, your, your, your you know, your classics or your, seriously, do you need it? I mean, yeah, it's kind of nice if you always wanted to wear one and good for you, but I think it would be really fun to wear somebody else's design who's an aspiring that could say, look, she loved me enough that I'm on the red carpet, you know, which was champagne, another mistake, I think. Um, but honestly, if you want the true story about that, I really think they they did an order in time. I think the people who must have done the Academy, uh, the Academy Awards Red didn't order it in time and they couldn't get it. This is my story. I mean, we're Hollywood. We tell a good story, usually. Um, we are the storytellers of the world. So I just think they ran out of red. And so they said, let's come up with a good story. Let's use champagne. They were really lucky. I talked with this on the tribe. They were really lucky because we had a rainstorm. We are raining like crazy here in California. Go figure. But we're really raining. A lot. In fact, we are in a disaster level because California tends to put stuff off and we haven't really thought about how to catch the water. And even if we had, uh, we don't have that many resources to catch this much water. Anyway, water everywhere. Uh, and uh, uh, it happened on Saturday, but luckily we had all of Sunday to dry out. We actually had warmer weather. It dried out the streets and stuff because all I could think of is if it rains on Sunday, that white copper carpet is going to be mud. You can only clean it so well. It would have been mud. They would have probably covered it with plastic. And then what's the point of a, of a champagne carpet? Yes. And yet everybody today was slipping on the news. If you watch the news, they call they still call it the red carpet. I mean, seriously, guys, it's been the red carpet since the beginning. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts they go back to it next year. Um, so my feeling is they just didn't order it in time with this pandemic. The pandemic is still affecting certain things. You order certain things and not everybody is Amazon. You can't just get it the next day. So I have a feeling that they had some hitch in the get along. Um, and uh, just couldn't get it. So they told you the champagne carpet story. It did give a guy, I don't know if you saw him on the news, he is an advocate for um, the red carpet, bring back the red carpet. And it's gonna make him feel really good when they bring it back next year. He'll feel like he's been listened to. So there's always a silver lining to every story, but I really believe that's the case. Let's wait and see, shall we? Come back here next year. You can tell me if I was right. Laugh at me if I was wrong, right? Okay, let's go to you and see what you have to say. Before I do, though, and I know it's 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 uh, 53 minutes into the hour, but I will post it later. Uh, I will not be broadcasting next week. No, let me say that again. I will not be broadcasting the week of 
the 20th through the 24th. Why? Because I'm going to take a little vacation. Um, one of the things that I have realized from the pandemic and also now that my husband is retired, yay, uh, it's time to rekindle friendships face to face that uh, I haven't been able to do. I have people that I love and I care about and I want to start to see their their shining faces and I want to hear about how they're doing and I want them to stand before me or sit at a nice meal and tell the story. So we're going to do a little road trip and we're going to start with uh, Lindsay, my husband's family. We're going to go see his little brother and uh, his little brother has, has, has long admired his big brother. And if you were a little brother and you admire your big brother, sometimes your big brother is, is, is not available to uh, come and see you. And, uh, and I don't know if it even matters to his little brother uh, on a personal level, but it excites him every time they get to get together. So I thought, let's go up and see their home. We haven't seen their home. I've been dying to see their home, but we've been very, very busy. And so in February, I actually nailed this trip down and uh, it's going to be a road trip. We're going to drive um, and we're threading the needle. <laughs> At least I hope we are with the rain. So uh, we'll see how well I do, but uh, uh, we're going to have to be a little careful in how we drive because there are areas that are have mudslides and there are challenges involved. So I have to be aware of the coast roads and things like that. But, uh, but I'm excited. I'm very excited to see, uh, to do and see and, and do stuff. And while I'm talking to you, thank you for helping me out. I'm trying to make a list of things I've got to do. It's already huge. Look at that for Monday only. Um, I've got to go. I'm going to go get to see my dad today. He had COVID and now he's better. Yay! So now I get to go see my hero, but uh, I also have to um, do something and you triggered it in my mind. So allow me just a moment to take a quick note. Okay, note is entered and uh, I will be able to to do right by it um, today. So, uh, so yeah, net the week of the and I'll post it 20th to the 24th. We're going to try and make sure you have some pre-recorded stuff. Have you been enjoying the pre-recorded stuff? I hope so. Um, we're going to continue to do that. It allows me to focus on some things I need to catch up on and decide where so social media is going for me and for you. I want to create content. I want to do it in a certain way, but I need time to plan. I, I am an artist. I'm a very active, semi-retired artist. Terry Harden, Google me if you want. Um, and... Uh, uh, it, there, it's important. It's, it's an important time where I need to get some things done, uh, promises I made. So I guess this is the fulfill your promise tour, you know, see some people you haven't seen in a while, hear what they are going off, see their homes, see how they're doing and, uh, and enjoy them. Meet with a couple people that you've been, you know, people that you really want to meet, but, uh, uh, you know, if you wait too long, you know, you kind of have that they're around forever and then they're not. So, uh, so I want to do that. I, will I be successful and see everybody I want to? Well, maybe not, but as much as I can, I want to do it. And, uh, and a lot of them are uh, part of Terry's tribe. So I hope you will join Terry's tribe, patreon.com slash Terry Harden. It's a, it's a great group of people. And I'm not just saying that because of me, I, I started it and I started it on a rocky note. I didn't do uh, really well at the beginning, but I did really well at the beginning. I just got it done. And I have to do a shout out to my husband and thank him because he said one thing about us, the team of Terry and Lindsay or Lindsay and Terry, however you like it, I prefer the latter, uh, is that we get stuff done. May take us a little while, but we get stuff done. And uh, that's a focus of ours. Um, there's a lot that we need to get done. Uh, hence my uh, list here. <laughs> but if you can get three things on that list done, you're, you're accomplishing something. Okay. But uh, there's a lot we want to do and a lot we want to get done. And uh, when we get it done, we make a check mark and we're, we, we check the boxes off and we're pretty, and, and you should feel good about that. You know, uh, it's important. During the pandemic, people said they were bored and I was anything but bored. I was actually seriously busy during the pandemic. 
at home being seriously busy. I thought, wow, now I get a chance to read some of the umpteen books I have. This is only a small portion. I've got a whole wall over here and I've got more stacked over here, which you can't see because I'm also doing an NDA project. So uh, a project you cannot see yet. Um, and so, yeah, just tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, work to be done. What is that behind me over my shoulder? Boy, this camera's low today, isn't it? Yeah, it would be so low. Boy, my framing. My husband is probably going, Terry, your framing. Dear Lord, that framing. Um, but anyway, there you go. My, I've got a lot more headroom too. Anyway, uh, did it quickly today because lots to do and it's Monday. Let's hear what you have to say. And then off I go, okay? It's been an hour. I usually try to end in an hour, but I'll give you another 30 minutes. How about that? I'd like to. Terry TV wants to get you you in on the act, and I hope you're liking Terry TV, and I hope you're liking the, the way that the channel is going. I hope so. Uh, good morning, Terry and fans, says Bob Berdeen. Joel says, I was so happy when Ka Hui Kwan won. See, I'm trying it, my friend. Uh, he was no longer a forgotten child actor. You know, the beauty of that is to see his lovely wife crying and him crying and just all that crying going on. Um, I remember the early Academy Awards where people just spoke their hearts. So the Academy made a announcement to people, uh, the presenters and to the uh, recipients, that if they did a heartfelt speech, they would let them go. But if they started to make a laundry list checklist, they were going to play the music and they were going to have to go off. And yet I was torn because they, the uh, Jimmy Kimmel said the uh, RRR guys who do the, the beautiful, uh, you know, not to, not to, not to, not to, not to dance um, were <laughs> any chance I get. Uh, we're going to dance you off. So I would have been torn between laundry list and heartfelt speech. I would have done the heartfelt speech, but I would have had to try to do the laundry list and keep saying, where are my guys? Where are my guys? Because I would have loved to have been danced off with uh, these fellows, you know, just, just, just love it. You know, just love, love, love that a lot. Hello, Catherine Taylor. So happy for Brendan Fraser. Yeah, boy, I was going absolutely nuts. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm alone with my husband only. Actually, my husband and my dog watch, let me watch this. And um, amazing that they were in the room. Usually my husband goes and works on something else because <laughs> he just doesn't. But he liked the show last night. I mean, this has brought people in that usually go, oh, not that again. Another award show. I mean, they really redeemed themselves. So me too, Catherine, me too. Morning. Hi, Cindy. Welcome, Cindy Marvel. Adam says, really great Oscars. If the low point of the year was certain jokes falling flat, then the testament to how great of a year this year, all the winners of the major awards, earned and deserved the awards. Great tribute to films. You can actually see the memoriam this year. No controversies. Can't hear to wait to hear what I think. The memoriam is one of my favorite things. Um, I really love that they include everybody. There were a couple of people on there that I worked with, one being Greg Jean painful for me to lose the amazing, the, um, the amazing Greg Gian and so many people in my circles know what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, just to see his picture up there. Oh, I just was so happy that they acknowledged him and I love them for it. And I hope that they will do the same for me when I pass. I'd love that the one time I get to be in the theater is maybe in memoriam, but at least I got there. I'm not saying I won't be. It's just that, you know, I, it really meant something to see those people. Um, you kind of expect animators, uh, but I'm grateful they included it. And not just, you know, big time actors is what I'm saying. So I'm with you, Adam. Loved it. Loved seeing it. Thought the song was lovely. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Yes, I did. Morning, sunshine. Hello, Cindy. Good to see you. Adam says, and if the low point is also mixed fashion choices, then again, testament to how great the show is. Oh, no. There were some really poor choices, as I said. The tomato. And the woman who forgot her top. Okay? She had this skirt on, and then it had looked like a corset with a bra, black bra. Uh, I put it out of my mind, so I can't remember what award she was giving. Unfortunately, she was a presenter. And it looked like 
I forgot my shirt. It felt like a, uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, you need, where's the rest of that outfit? Uh, a problem for me. Definitely a problem for me. Uh, good, mor uh, good morning, all. Happy Oscar Monday. I loved the show last night. It was great. Few flat jokes, few glitches, another badly crafted and incomplete memoriam sequence, but overall much better than the last few shows. Well, the memoriam, as you know, you have to go to the academy.org to, or the oscars.org to see the rest. So um, I thought that was very smart for them to do that because then it pulls them into the academy does things all year round, guys, not just the show. So uh, pretty smart that the memorial wasn't like full, you know, when you're on a time constraint, Joe. So that's how they roll. Um, Adam says, uh, your friend Guillermo singing the praises of animation, praying this will open a lot of people's eyes. So happy that Jamie Lee won for you and his, and Ka Hoi Kwan, uh, his acceptance speech honestly made me cry. Same with Brendan Fraser. So proud for all of them because they were about, they were about their hearts and we all love the heart. Don't we? We love the heart. Yeah. And I'm so glad the Academy said, share your heart or you won't be sharing the stage. Right? So now you got to plan for that. Okay. You got to plan for it. Don't plan by bringing a written speech. Uh, don't do that. Um, that's the, just as much as authentic as it is. It doesn't look very authentic. And that's, that's said with love, seriously. Um, it, it just, it, it never works. And, um, and uh, when you, when you got off script and you spoke from your heart, I'm speaking of the designer for Wakanda. We, we really were, were sucked in and we loved your, loved your, what you said. So keep that in mind for next time. Adam says, and you can definitely tell John Travolta was really affected by the loss of Olivia Newton, John, and even his wife three weeks prior. Yeah. Also he should wear glasses because he had trouble reading. And, um, I know you got to take the glasses off and you got to wipe them and everything. I knew you were broken up because of Olivia. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. Yeah. 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 Um, um, John Travolta has really, he's, he's a comeback kid. He could share comeback kid stories with Brendan, you know, cause he did a horrible film years ago with Lily Tomlin. That was so bad. People said it destroyed his career. So he laid low for a while and then he came back with a vengeance in that John Travolta way. So congratulations to John Travolta, any actor, uh, Tom Hanks might consider doing this, do more production. Let us not see you for a while. And when you come back, we're going to be so excited to see you, Tom. Uh, we won't be able to wait, but please, not another accident. Please, no more accidents. Please. Three years prior, correction, Kelly Preston died in 2020. Yes, yes, I know what you meant, Adam. I know what you meant. And I knew the others would help correct you because they do it with love here. And that's the way you correct. You do it with love. Um, the good news is James Cameron also has plenty of chances with his Avatar sequels done the line, super happy they won, well-deserved visual effects, and you knew that visual effects was going to get it. But like I said, I think it would have gotten a lot more if people understood the process. The process is still very new to those who are not involved in it. I've been doing performance capture for a while. Haven't done it in a while, but have done it, so I knew exactly what it was. And, uh, you know, so uh, it, 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 it's day will come. And he's got two more movies, right? Two more? Yeah. So... It's day will come. The woman with the white collar was ridiculous. Adam is she was she she is a singer who had part in the song for Wakanda, but that's no reason you wear that whatever it was. It wasn't a hat, or she could have removed it. It was some kind of big collar, fluffy queen. I don't know what it was, but it need to be removed. That's all there is to it. Very rude. Very rude. Your comments are spot on. Thank you, Diane. You're so sweet to say that. Thank you. RRR was great. I wish I would have been prepared for the length. I got, you know, Joel, I did not feel this movie. This movie had so much energy at a time when I wanted to see a film with energy. Everything everywhere had lots of energy, but it wasn't my cup of tea. Just incidents that happened in there that I could have not seen for the rest of my life, you know? And, um, which made me sad because I love everyone in it. Directing, brilliant. I mean, if you watch that film, you go, how in the heck did they ever direct this thing? I would love to see behind the scenes of that film because the storyboards 
I'm hoping they use storyboards. They had to have some kind of a roadmap. The directors did a great job, as did the editor. Hats off to the editor. He was my vote. And here's a movie that wasn't my cup of tea, and yet I'm voting for editing because it was incredible. Even Lindsay, my husband, who is an editor or was retired now, um, said the same thing. The editing was just wow, 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 wow. I mean, that movie, you got to watch it. May not be your cup of tea, but see it once, maybe twice. Uh, see it a couple of times just to, to get the feel of it because my goodness, guys, very, very impressive. I'm messing with my hair because I just, you know, my bright orange sweater today, which I think really looks good on camera. So there I go, being about myself again. But you're right, Joel, really, really nice. Still great though. Yeah, wow. Yes, great, great, great. Well, you know, and then, you know, last night uh, behind camera, they said they're not even the ones that are making this this movie and this song so popular. Everybody, TikTok, everybody is doing the, you know, not to, not to, not to, not to dance. So there you go. Great cardio. I wasn't able to get caught up in all the Oscar nominees, says Joe, on my list, but I did see a few, including Tar and The Whale. Great performances in both, but not cheery films. The Whale, in particular, is very depressing, but the performance redeems it. Well, it's it's a very, um, if you see Gods and Monsters, it's also depressing, but it's a, they're dramas. You know, they're both dramatic films. And this was very important to the career of Brendan Fraser because during the time of Deadly Do Right, George of the Jungle, Encino Man, he was thought as a smarmy actor. In the industry, people just didn't think he had the acting chops, which was absolutely incorrect. <clears throat> but thanks for playing, he did Gods and Monsters, and he was incredible. And all of us, when we were sitting with him during um, uh, Monkey Bone, he did Monkey Bone. Yes, he did. And uh, I sat with him and told him he was brilliant in Gods and Monsters and why not more? And he just openly said he's not getting the chances. Now he'll get those chances. And aren't you excited to see what else the man can do? You will be. You will be, as Yoda says, really, really talented, this man. Veronica says... Love Michelle. She's gorgeous and talented. She's brilliant. And oh my gosh, I was so happy. Uh, her speech was lovely. She hit all the notes and she hit them at the elegance, which is Michelle. So note one, little girls, don't give up your dreams. Little girls who look like me, don't give up your dreams. But we all look like her in one way or another, don't we? We're different. Yes, we are. Uh, women, don't let anyone tell you you're past your prime. That's a big one. I've never believed it. I'm so glad she doesn't believe it either, but it's good that she took the time to say it from the stage. And uh, don't give up on your dreams, guys. You know, uh, the husband in this, this Everything Everywhere movie, um, he said he almost gave up on his dreams and look at where he is today. So don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, he was so happy. I loved watching him cry. Uh, that whole cast is my hero of last night. I love them all. Uh, they actually showed a picture of Michelle Yeoh's mother in Malaysia, and there was an entire party who cheered for her. Yes, they all came together at the mom's place or at a relative's place. She spoke about it from the stage. And then she also said in Hong Kong, they had a big group of people watching her too because that's where she did a lot of films too. So uh, exciting, yeah? Exciting. I mean, I, I I can imagine that people in India were watching to see if RRR, how they would do too. So kind of nice to have all the people together having a watch party. Very lovable. Don't have to be like me and be by yourself. Not you know, It's not necessary. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Joe says, I have to step away for a brief moment. Be back. <laughs> he always wants to tell me. He could just step away. I wouldn't know it. I think he's watching the whole time, wouldn't I? <laughs> I love the the gel man's Jamie. Oh, the the gal. I think that's gal, but it looks like it's an eye. Or do I have something on my computer? Oh, it was something on my computer. Sorry, Veronica. The gal man's Jamie and Michelle have. I love that they sat next to their husbands. And thank their husbands. I mean, let's say that Jamie Lee Curtis, 
uh, marrying and being, you know, having a relationship and being married with one of the most amazing, talented people. I think she should turn to Christopher Guest and say, when do we get your next film, buddy? Christopher Guest, brilliant. Brilliant actor, but even better, his stories are so good. So I'm like, you know, could you lean over and whisper in the ear of your husband that we'd like to see more films from him? But uh, they all acknowledge their husbands and their wives and well, they should. Um, it's very, it's it, it, when you get up on stage though, as one of them said, this is very intimidating up here. It can be. And my husband, who's won several Emmys, uh, it took him a, a couple of rounds. I'm glad he had them but a couple of rounds to thank his wife. Uh, he kept saying that when he got up there, he just didn't know what to say. He's not a person who likes to be in front of people on the stage. I've said this before. So he felt very bad when he got up the stage and people go, you didn't thank your wife. Uh, but he knows that through his actions, you know, being my husband and loving me the way he does and bringing me tea or coffee, uh, whatever, uh, he shows it with actions. They speak louder. So he never has to worry about that. I'm never going to be like, you didn't make me from the stage. Uh, that kind of makes it about me, don't they? But I really love that everyone last night thanked their wives and their moms and their kids. That was so lovely, so much better than a list of people who made the movie. I mean, I can't, I want to not believe that you're going to not pick someone because they didn't mention your name as a thank you when you cast them in the last movie. I mean, come on, you did it because they're good. So why, they, they, you know who you are. They're grateful for the movie. They're holding the award. They're crying. You helped them build a dream. What more do you need? You need your name again? No, you don't. So we don't need these laundry lists. And I thought the Academy did such a great job of saying, if you're going to tell us your laundry list, we want your heart. And oh, they could have been my voice coming out. And that's what made the show so beautiful last night. Seriously. It wasn't about scoring points. It was about speaking your heart and the love of human beings. And I absolutely thought it was fantastic. It was really, really good. I really did feel bad for the Avatar people getting cut off midway during the speech, but I get it because of overtime. No, again, Adam, as I said earlier, they are now, now that they get the opportunity, now that the Academy has said, if you speak your art, we'll go for a little bit. But if you make a laundry list. Now, if you're a group, you have to designate one or two people. They won't let everyone speak, especially if there's as many people as they were for Avatar up there on that stage. But you had your two main guys. They need to just decide two or three. You can do it with three, but you need to have it in such a way that it flows. It flows like water. Be like water, Bruce Lee. It flows like water so that they don't have a place. You see where they cut. They just cut. Because then near the time when this was happening, they were getting aggressive, but usually they're polite about it. They really are. And so you do what Guillermo does, which is let the director who worked with you on the film equally as important, not as well known as the great Guillermo del Toro. Let him go first. He speaks. They're going to wait for Guillermo. They wouldn't dare cut off Guillermo del Toro. So Guillermo knows this. Not he. Guillermo wouldn't even say dare. He said, they want to hear what I have to say. They're going to wait for me, right? In the way he does so joyfully and so well. So you, he, he, he pushes this guy to the front. This guy gets to speak. And then the camera turns to him, expecting him to speak. If you're fortunate enough to be with someone like that, you ask them, could you go first? That way you both get to speak. But if you're not as fortunate, then you got to have it like a tennis match or a ping pong match. You got to be sure you're going back and forth. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the two directors from what? Everything, everywhere, all at once. They do it like pros. They've had a lot of practice. They've won a lot of awards, but they really do show you how to do it. Enthusiasm, energy, and we, da-da-da, then they speak. We, da-da-da, I speak, and it works beautifully. And then at the end, you let a couple of others speak because you were winning like crazy. So congratulations, congratulations. Hi, Linda. Hi, everyone, she says. I would love to hear your speech. I could only imagine what you're speaking capabilities. It would be beautiful. Thank you. That is very nice of you to say, Sarah. Uh, I would probably be like the husband from um, 
everything everywhere, I'd be crying a lot. Okay. Cause, cause, uh, you know, I felt his everything rushing towards him. I felt maybe I should sit a little closer. Maybe that's what's irritating me about the, there we go. There's a little bit. She figures framing at one 18 minutes in, but, uh, uh, honestly, um, his crying because you never, maybe you never believed it was really going to happen. Maybe you did believe it was really going to happen. And now it really does. And that people have been telling you really the truth in some areas, they really did like you. Uh, so many emotions run through you as you see everyone smiling you. And a lot of them are your heroes. You know, a lot of them are people you love in films. A lot of people you love seeing in films. I mean, you know, um, to see the rock in that salmon color, my husband says it's salmon, not pink. Um, jacket I thought was wonderful. I mean, there's very few men who could really pull that off. Uh, and it just looked, I thought he looked really good. Um, but then more than what people look like, it, you just see people smiling up at you. And I actually feel sorry for Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise wasn't there. And, uh, it could be for a multitude of reasons, but I really wished he could have been there because Maverick did so well. I bet you he'd just be inundated with people hugging him and shaking his hand and saying, wow, that was a great movie. Man, we really love that movie. My kids dig that movie. My kids want to meet the Tom Cruise. I mean, I really think he missed an opportunity here, but he may not have been in control of that opportunity. Maybe he was certain a movie. I don't know, but, um, it, there was more to Maverick than him taking his shirt off. No, seriously, there was. And uh, I just think he would have had a really good time. He really would have enjoyed being with the people from everything, everything everywhere all at once. I'm sure we're hero, heroes of his own. But uh, I also would, I, I got to tell you, I love the girl who was played the daughter. She cried when everybody won. And it was just adorable to see her. Hugs and kisses to her. Uh, Ka, he. Uh, his uh, the husband's wife actual wife crying in the audience there was a lot of tears flowing there was flooding inside that theater as much as flooding california is having outside as well so uh amazing just amazing and uh, i was very proud and honored to be a part of it last night thank you to the academy and everyone for a great 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 show i still haven't seen michelle in yes madam what do you think of that one um i i have um when it comes to her, it's hard not to like everything she does. So I liked her in that one too. So she's got one coming out that I don't know. It's a fantasy kind of Marvel-esque one. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but usually I like it because it's her. She usually brings to see what Michelle does that all actors should do. And I'm not going to name those that don't, but what Michelle does is she brings it no matter what. If Michelle... If, if, if Cocaine Bear, which is an embarrassment just to say the name, I'm sorry, but if Cocaine Bear had Michelle as a part of it, supporting actor, cameo actor, whatever, Michelle would have brought everything she had to the production because that's her integrity as an actor. And that's what I love about her. The movie can be an absolute dog and she would be amazing in it. I know this. I haven't really technically seen any that I thought were absolute dogs, but there's some that I didn't think were very good that I think she just excels in. So she always brings it and gives everything she's got. And she's a perfect example of what you need to do as an actor. It's your trade. Bring everything you got, no matter what you think of the film. Yep. Absolutely. Nate Singleton, how the heck are you, buddy? Hello. Can't stay and watch, but wanted to send some love your way. Missing you, my man. Missing you. Why didn't someone call out Tom Hanks sooner when it was being made? You know, they might have. This is my question, Veronica. My question is, are people too afraid to tell Tom Hanks the truth? Has he gotten so big? The woman on Channel 5 said he should never, no one should be allowed. This is what she said on Channel 5. No one should be allowed to put Tom Hanks in the Razzies or diss Tom Hanks performances ever. This is a big statement and it's absolutely wrong. Tom Hanks would say this is wrong. I believe that about him. You know, um, he was, I was in a movie with him. I was supposed to have a speaking part. It didn't happen. But the point is, is he's very professional and dedicated. And I think he would have appreciated not looking silly. And he looked silly in that movie. He did not choose to be silly. I just can't imagine that he didn't listen to someone. Maybe he didn't but that will forever be his secret. I hope now that they, they say something because it was just awful, awful. 
Also, the moment when, I love that you guys can spell this name, hugged and kissed Harrison Ford, such a beautiful moment. Poor Harrison Ford, okay? Uh, Harrison Ford up on the stage, and they cut to Key, or Ka, however you say it. Key, I'm going to say Key. Please, if it's wrong, let me know. Um, but anyway, and he can't even sit still in the chair. He is like a Pekingese. He is like, or Chihuahua. He is like, he couldn't, I mean, he was so cute. And you could just tell he was hoping for a chance to say hi to Harrison Ford. At that point, I don't even know if he was thinking about best picture. He was like, how am I going to get up there to, th to, to see my old friend or to see someone and remind him who I, whatever, right? And then he wins. And if you watch that sequence, I mean, that should be a meme. Him running and leaping at Harrison Ford. <laughs> Harrison Ford looking a little dodgy, looking a little old, kind of shuffling up, looking like he was feeling so well. And then he must have really had his heart stop as uh, Kay went, ah, and hugged and spun him around and cried and bah, 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 uh, a really cute sequence. So. <laughs> If you see Harrison Ford, he's a little overcome, but uh, all in good fun. It was all his heart coming right out, and that was just lovely. Just turned but wanted to shout out Pinocchio's win, seeing Lisa Henson on the Oscar stage. Yeah, fun, huh? Wouldn't you love to be? I mean, I hope it tells Henson's they need to create. They don't need to copy. Disney doesn't need to copy. Remember, you were creators back in the day, okay? And uh, get back to that, please. Okay. If anything, uh, if 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 anything, everywhere, uh, all at once does everything. Everywhere all at once does is show you to be creative, create something, be bold, create something, and look what can happen. Good cast, good directors, good editing. A movie that everyone likes except for me. Um, uh, not my cup of tea. So, but I did love everything about it. Love Jamie Lee Curtis. Did not love everything about it, uh, but loved Jamie Lee Curtis. I can watch her performance over and over again. She's so funny. And the ending. I will play the ending on a loop. That's how much I love the ending of that movie. The last, say, 20, 20 minutes of it was my favorite. Um, the rest of it, eh, for me, just not my cup of tea. Um, but uh, uh, loved everybody in it. Knew they all had fun. Knew they all love each other. All of them crying for each other. Would have loved to have been in that film. Uh, maybe not you know, in certain portions of that film, even as an extra, which they didn't have a lot of extras in there. Did you notice that? Uh, but yeah, I would have liked to have done that simply because to be around that energy, which was beautiful. And those people were beautiful. So congratulations to everything, everywhere, all at once. A movie that's not my cup of tea, but congratulations. Brilliant, brilliant editing, brilliant directing. Um, everyone feels it was a brilliant film. You won. And uh, uh, it's a good film. It's just not my film, not a film for me. So how many times have I said that? Let's just move on, girl. Uh, what Don Bluth did with rotoscope was he characterized the rotoscope every 16th frames. Yeah, that's Don Bluth, not Ralph Bakshi. Ralph Bakshi. Traced. Yeah. Admitted he traced, actually. Yes. Favorite hairstyles at the Oscars, LOL. Adam, at least they did their hair. There are some times when the Academy Awards came and it looked like everyone had just woke up or their hairstylists had been teleported to another planet. The hair was so, so bad. Um, there was one hairstyle, the one with the pillar of hair. All I could think of is how long did that take? My own hair took a long time to put on top of my head. And uh, it's heavy when it's on top of your head that way. She actually balanced it very well, but it became all about the hair. So I don't know if that's the kind of thing she wanted to have happen, but she looked very statuesque and beautiful. So hmm, it, it, that that one was the most noticeable to me, very, very avant-garde, like a couture of its own. But because of the weight, you know, when you put all these dreads up in on, up on the top, it's it's heavy. Yeah. And you make a pillar like she did. Yeah. And then you've got to balance it. That takes skill, all of that skill so that she doesn't hurt her neck, you know, because it's a lot of weight up there on her head. Um but that's probably one of the more, the most interesting hairstyle I saw. Uh, some of them look like they just woke up. The documentary, the guy who won for documentary looked like he just woke up. Uh, there were some beautiful suits 
that I saw, I thought they were really nice. The men looked good, except for the man who didn't seem to be able to buckle, to button his tuxedo coat. Um, get one that fits. You know, we're not going to dish you. But if you can't button it, it looks like sloppy. Everybody else is all buttoned up and looking wonderful. And you're on stage except they they wore it. And you look like you just rushed to get your, you know, it, I don't know. Didn't look good. Um, uh, other hairstyles, memorable hairstyles. There were hairstyles that, I mean, Chastain, Jessica Chastain just looks beautiful, you know. Don't hate her because she's beautiful. But, you know, just a nice comb through and the way the hair hung down, the dress complimented her skin, her makeup complimented. That was really so beautiful and well put together. She just looks so lovely. And then you had, you know, Selma Hayek and the, the, you know, ooh, yeah. Then there was another one, a feather dustery one. I can't remember. It was black. It went like this, but it had the feather duster on the bottom. I figured she probably walked the stage and dusted before she came out on the stage. But uh, it was a beautiful dress all the same and utilitarian too. But uh, yeah, many of them, like the one with the woman who had the black and the white that looked like fabric wrapped around her and it drug all the way out and she, what a mess that dress was. And uh, the whole thing turned out to be a big mess. So didn't notice a lot of hairstyles yesterday. Just really happy that there were hairstyles because a lot of times people kind of phone it in and it gets really exhausting to watch people just phone in their hair. So I was really happy to see hair and makeup and style and grace and beautiful dresses and lovely, lovely looks. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely looks. I didn't have any particular problem with the new live action Little Mermaid, but the Oscars are not a space for Disney to advertise. It is if they're on ABC. <laughs> Just get used to it, Joe. Uh, uh, I also had real issues with the Warner Brothers tribute, which looked like a commercial. Lots of MGM classics in the Warner Brothers thing. I don't care if Warner owns the classic library. There aren't Warner Brothers films. And how about many actual WB classics did they show? Two, three, it was just the Disney 100 thing. Too much emphasis on the mouse. I thought the Disney 100 thing didn't have enough on Walt. <laughs> I just thought, I've actually fast forward through it. It was nothing I needed to see, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm with you, Joe. It was kind of, it was meh. They should have worked harder. It is their channel. It is their channel. It's their channel. If you're going to use it to market, market well. Don't market bad. Market well. I, the one I really liked, if you want to know, Joe, is, um, <laughs> well, I don't know how good it was <laughs> as a commercial because it's about a car, but I don't remember the car or the company. I just remember that I loved them um, um, doing uh, showcasing of stunt coordinators, best boys, you know, the people that it takes a village to make a film that the director said that, you know, I think we're getting away from the director being the end all and beat all of a film that we realize there's a village behind them of people that are very talented, very good and should be acknowledged. And I really appreciated that. Well, that, that advertisement uh, did just that. And I stopped it every time to watch, see who these people were and hear what they had to say. Loved it. Loved them. Were they interested in the car? Who knows? Who cares? That's probably why I didn't care about the car because I loved seeing the people. So that was my vote for my Super Bowl. I mean, uh, Academy uh, commercial. I was not offended by the live mermaid version and thought some of the swimming moves were interesting, but I am concerned about competing with Pat Carroll's iconic Ursula. Yeah, that's not going to happen. See, the problem, Stephen, is that they've set that preview. See what that preview did. Let's say whether you're offended or you're not offended. Let's leave that out of it. Okay. I know that's part of it, but let's, let's, let's pretend and leave that out of it. Let's just look at the structure itself. You and me, Stephen. Okay. They're tracing the animation and the animation does things that in real life you cannot do because you're human and your body only builds so many bends, bends so many ways. So it's going to be challenged. I really would have loved for them to take the Little Mermaid and tell their version, live action version. Okay. 
tell a little mermaid version that is your live action version if you want to name her ariel that's your business but it's to, to tr i mean that preview traced over the original film and that's not going to entertainment make uh i don't know how many people who love the little mermaid will say gosh i wish i could see this with real people uh, they would see a play but even a play called the little mermaid or a play called wicked or uh, the play in the 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 live action stage show that you see in little to little Tokyo in Tokyo Disneyland in Tokyo Disneyland is amazing. All done in the air, all done aerially. <laughs> play on words. You like how I did that? Uh, and it's beautiful. They float through the air. They tell the story. It's told because why? They are live action, and they realize. In live action, they don't have the freedom that animation does. And they work with it. Don't ignore it. Work with it. Let me say that again. Don't ignore it. Work with it. It's like she's apologizing for not being able to bend the way the animation bends. And she can't. She's a human girl. So I'm not even talking about some of the things that people are dissing. I'm talking about I don't want to watch her struggle to match things in animation she simply cannot because she is a human being she is not a drawing maybe she could be someday but she's not so if we cross over to ursula what are we going to do about that oh my gosh i saw a lot of cg involved so what they're going to just use her face and her arms maybe her bust ah, fun to play if she wants to but don't make her do the faces because she's not going to get there. She, Her mouth only goes so big and her eyes only go so big. She's not an animated character, nor will she ever be unless somebody draws her. So uh, preview looked painful to me. I, I, I really was sad because she was trying her best. And all I could think of is how many takes did they put this poor girl through to do that rock? <sighs> I just went, ugh. And probably fans aren't going to appreciate it. Yet she worked very hard. Sorry, doesn't look like something that's going to be fun for me. I'll go see it, but it don't look fun. Uh, speaking of COVID, I've been negative for 48 hours. Congratulations! Back to work since Saturday. Congratulations! I'm officially signed off to do photos in Toontown. And trust me, the land has been given the love it long deserves. Yay, 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 yay. That's wonderful news. Thank you, Adam, for sharing that with us. Yay, yay, yay. Oscars, Lindsay approved. Yeah, he, 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 he I, I, I won't go as far as saying he loved the show, but he liked it a lot. The thing is, he was present in the room with me the whole night, and my dog was too. She was looking a little sad because we, she, she wished we had retired to the bedroom and just, you know, propped up the bed and watched it on the bed so she could be comfortable. But uh, we sat in the front room. I was working on my project uh, during the commercial breaks and making sure that I am ready for what I need to be ready for. I'm still, uh, you can't rush certain things when you're designing. You cannot rush a design. As much as you want to rush it and as much as things are right before you, you cannot rush it. You have to go at the pace that it wants to go. And sometimes it wants to go a lot slower than you want it to go. So uh, I'm not as far as I want to be, but uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm happy to say I'm getting there. Yeah, I should have it where I can, look at it more and just kind of do it. It's good when you're designing though, to step away and come back because you see it in a whole new light. You can go down a rabbit hole and go, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. And then you can say, oh, it's working. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway, there you go. Um, yes. Hi, Terry. How are you? Like the part where the announcer says, here we go, Mike. You like the part when the announcer says, see, I'm not even going to go to the comment. Uh, you can hear what the customers and makeupers have to say by clicking the Q, by taking a picture of the QR code on your screen of these, the Academy Awards, right? No. Creative thing that Don Bluth did with, with Rotoscope is that he characterized the movie. Yeah, you're saying it again. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. Disney did the same thing. Okay. Disney rotoscoped to get the feel and the movement of the actors. Okay. Actors did it. I.E. Uh, Margaret Carey doing Tinkerbell. She was the model for Tinkerbell. They did not trace Margaret Carey. They used her movements to see how it flowed. They broke it down. Same deal. Same deal. Don Bluth is a brilliant animator, by the way, Joel. Not saying anything against him. He's amazing. And Philo Barnhart worked with him, my friend, since I was, what, 16, 17, 15, somewhere in there. They did not include everyone in the memoriam this year. A lot of people who were not mentioned not mentioned. I read quite a lot of complaints from the people who were friends of some of those who passed. People don't want to be forced to go to a website while Jimmy Kegel cracks stupid jokes with Cocaine Bear and Malala. Yeah, I, I didn't love the Cocaine Bear sequence. I don't understand why it was there. I don't get it. I would have liked to see more memoriam. I agree with you. Uh, in fact, personally, I would love to see everybody that I'd like to pay homage to everybody that, that has uh, crossed over. Uh, I love that sequence. I think that that's a sequence that it's just so special. And I, it's the one thing I like when TCM does it. Um, I just love that stuff. I, I think it's really important that we get to celebrate those who have entertained us so well and to be sad, like James Conn, you know, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss him. And I, I still um, miss, uh, Alan Rickman. I miss him a lot. Yeah, I miss him a lot. And then I am watching that uh, Last of Us. I haven't seen the last two episodes, so please don't give me a spoiler. Last one dropped last night in conflict with the Academy Awards. Next time, record. Just a tip. Uh, a little hack for you. Uh, but uh, wow, the actress who is in that Last of Us, she passed away. And I love her. I love her because she's a, a, a character actress who appears, does these beautiful performances and then disappears and you can never remember her name. At least that's me. I just know when I see her, my heart leaps up and go, oh, it's her. I just go crazy for her. And so to see her in this, this, this new series, I was so excited. But then um, they dedicated one of the shows to her. She had passed away. And that those, I mean, I hate to lose them. But the nice thing is their, their performances are on film, so you can always revisit it. And that's what the beauty of being, uh, is, is watching and loving film is. So uh, they got lots, you know. Well, hello, Nicole. I was not a fan of Tar, to quote you, not my cup of tea, but my goodness, Kate Blanchett was, yeah, did she like scare you a lot? She was so good. And, and she uses every part of her body, including her hair. Did you just love that, Nicole? Like her hair had a life of its own in that movie. It was amazing. Yeah. You got to watch it. Maybe put it on silent if it wasn't your cup of tea and watch her just do the moment with the hair. You're going to feel it without sound. And, and Hitchcock says, uh, do the movie without sound. And if you can follow the story, it's, it's that much of a better film. And I agree with him. I think that uh, uh, when you can watch a movie without sound, it, it tells a story. And the one that is really good is a series, Last of Us. It's like that. They don't do a lot of talking. And so you, they don't over explain. They don't over show. They just let you experience and ride along. It's, it's really is uh, good. Uh, my husband says that he thinks that they're only going to do two seasons though. So we're going to feel that one when it goes away. It's really, really good. I thought maybe it was only going to do one season, but I haven't seen the finale yet. Hello, Mike. I like the part where the announcer says, stay tuned for the six o'clock news followed by NBC nightly news, inner country voice. He's really fixated on this thing. He must have it on a screensaver, right? Mike, answer me. You have it on a screensaver, don't you? We love you for it. I'm looking forward to American Born Chinese on Disney, which has three of the nominated actors from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah, that's the one that looks a little bit precarious. I hope it's good. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, sometimes you'll take these Academy Award winners and you'll throw them into something and the 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 venue isn't good. But one of the things I will say to you, Nicole, is that Michelle brings it every single time. So it'll be worth your while to watch her. And I'm sure the other two will be just as fun to watch. It definitely would be something fun to watch. Uh, but um, hopefully 
it, it will be another smash wonderful hit. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. Adam says, Christopher Guest, a true chameleon of an actor. You put the characters in Waiting for Guffman, Spinal Tap, Princess Bride together, and you forget all the same guy, and he's actually an amazing director and writer. You have not mentioned Best of Show. Best of Show is brilliant. If you haven't seen it, Adam, you have not treated yourself to an amazing film. Best of show, so much fun. All your favorites. That's one thing. Christopher Guest had a had a troop, kind of like Monty Python. And if you don't know what Monty Python is, you're missing out also. So uh, go see them as well. Um, they're from my generation, and uh, they are so, so amazing. Um, the Dead Parrot Skit alone is worth its weight in gold, in my opinion, as well as the Lumberjack. But it may not be your cup of tea. It's mine. Uh, in this case, Christopher Guest, Best of Show, was my favorite. I also love Waiting for Guffman. And uh, these other ones that he's mentioned, uh, Princess Bride, very good. But Christopher is so good at, as 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 Adam is saying right here, uh, he writes and directs. And his little body of troupe that did these movies really were special. And one of the ones that I just can't stop watching over and over and over and better put it on my list is Best of Show. Love Best of Show. Go see it. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I thought the same thing, Joe, says Bob Berdeen. Excellent. Uh, yes. So, you know, the, unfortunately, um, they 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 cut something that they shouldn't, but it could go very, very long. So at least you get to see it. Yes, I know you don't want to go to a website to see it, but think about it. You go to a website, you can see it as many times as you want over and over and over again and see everybody. OK, they're trying to make uh, lemonade out of lemons. They have to cut the show somewhere. And so, yeah. And, you know, I know the host. There were some jokes that you didn't feel were, you know, necessarily that funny. But a host has to to get a host. They have a certain criteria, too. So you're answering to a lot of people in the entertainment industry. And if you're not in it, then you don't know about it. But if you have been in it, you know, there's a lot of mouths to feed. So it takes a lot to do uh, planning. And I wish they had come out. They did a little quick thing to, to thank everybody, but they should have just taken time and they didn't. But they should have taken time to, to thank everybody who made the show happen because they did a phenomenal job. So I'll do it. All the, the, the village that made the Academy Awards happen from the closing of the road for a, for a month to the laying of the carpet, to the awning, to everything. Listen, guys, uh, great, incredible job. Hats off to you, everyone involved. You did an amazing job this year. You should be happy. Hope you're asleep. Uh, Joe, if you watch it on Channel 7, their parent company is Disney. <laughs> Joe knows that, but Sally, good to tell him. <laughs> uh, key, if it helps you out. Thank you, Adam. I'm just going to say key now. That's what I said before. Long E. Thank you. And rest assured, uh, Key's leap on Harrison has become a new meme. It needs to be. I saw him like a chihuahua sitting in the chair wanting, I mean, he didn't even listen to the fact that his movie won. All he saw, Tunnel Vision, Harrison Ford, movie wins, I'm um, in that guy's lap. And he didn't even have a lap. <laughs> so uh, uh, it was all with love. So I'm sure he enjoyed it. Mark Silverman just appears. Hopefully he'll say something. <clears throat> I'm so glad that Key, Brendan, and Michelle won. I'm also glad Guillermo. Me too, Joshua. Me too. Uh, favorite movie was, was Pinocchio. Yeah. And one that didn't get on there, the menu. I love the menu. And for those of you who avoided it because you thought it was about cannibalism, it's not. And it's brilliant. You got to see it. I was really sorry it wasn't nominated for something. It was so good. Creative. Thoughtful. Good. So the menu... Uh, is one that got overlooked. Loved it. Make more original films. Exactly. Get off your butt and create. Let me say it again. Get off your butt and create. Don't copy. You know who I'm talking about. Don't trace. Don't copy. Create. You can do it. You did it before. Don't be so afraid. Stop being afraid and create. You got this. 
If you don't believe you don't got this, look at those two directors and creators of everything, everywhere, all at once. Even if it's not your cup of tea, the movie is new, creative, and different. So go get them, Tigers. You can do it. You can do it. Right, Joshua? They can do it. What are your thoughts about the Pinocchio winner? Honest, wonderful, the best movie! <laughs> Did I say that right, Joseph? Uh, she said she wore her shirt straight up as homage to many women in Africa that, that balance so much on their heads with boys and grace. Yeah, she did. But what I'm saying is the people who did her hair because she's not one of those women who balances all that stuff on her hair, right? On her head, right? So what I'm saying is it's very heavy. The hairdressers, this was an homage to the hairdressers that did her hair. Okay, I've got it right here. Okay, so I'm not speaking illy. I'm not speaking out of turn. Here it is. It has weight to it. Believe me. Um, to put it all on top of her head, they had to do it in such a way she doesn't hurt her neck. Okay, because she's not someone who has done this. She's done it as a tribute, but she doesn't balance things on her head. So they have to be careful she doesn't get hurt. You have to have the ergonomics of the hairstyle fit well. You understand, Nicole? You follow me? They had to protect that actress because uh, she wants to be able to walk on camera, look good, not be thrown out of balance because of the tower she's wearing on her head. Mm -hmm. There might have been something inside to help lighten that hair on top. It could have been a form inside that helped it so that it's not so dense. I'm not saying it was, but that also is a technique that many use. That is the brilliance of hair and makeup uh, right there. So, uh, but it was the most uh, phenomenal hairstyle, hairstyle of the, of the uh, night. It was amazing and perfectly executed. Yeah, it's great, but it's heavy. Yeah, it could be heavy unless they did something to help lighten it. So she she protects her neck. No one wants to be hurt because of hairstyle. At least I don't think so. Lindsay says, guess it's time to bring back the screen card. Ladies, please remove your hats. <laughs> or whatever that was. Yeah, really annoying. Thanks for jumping in. That's my husband right there. I know you were talking about Ralph Bakshi at first. I just saying Don Booth did better. Oh, yeah, Don Booth did way better. For one thing, he didn't trace, he didn't trace mice, did he? Secret of Nim? Yeah. Okay. We know what you're saying. Absolutely, Joe. We know what you're saying. Rotoscope can be very blurring to look at. Yeah, Bakshi will show you that right away. Uh, but Bluth took rotoscoping to another level, as did Disney. Walt did too. Let's not forget that Walt took rotoscoping and his animators to, to a completely, I mean, come on, come on, come on, come on, you know? Um, that's what I'm saying. Don Bluth. Yes, absolutely. Disney. Absolutely, Joel. So, uh, uh, and you're right. That's why rotoscoping and tracing is boring. So what was my point? If Little Mermaid live action is tracing the animated, it's going to be, let me hear it, boring. Nothing to do with the actors, only the storyline. It, if it looks like tracing, if it feels like you're just tracing a movie that's already been done, it's going to be boring. I'm warning you, it's going to be boring. It has nothing to do with all of the other things that you're talking about. It's just going to be boring. The songs will be good because she's singing them, but it's going to be boring. And that was the problem with that preview. It looked like they were tracing everything. There was nothing new in it. Except, except for trying to make it look more diverse. That's new. I'll give them that. But, mm -mm -mm, you know, people are worried. Can they do the same as the actors who did the voices in the original? We shouldn't be worrying about that. Okay, case in point, Cinderella. I always say this. Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella, which is a live action film that I think really works. They took it to their level. Yes, it had a coach. Yes, it had Cinderella. Yes, it changed horses and mice and all of that into characters. But they did it their way. You know, they did it their way. The fairy godmother did not look or dress like the fairy godmother from the animated film, nor did anybody else. And as a result, it's a lot of fun to watch, my opinion, again. 
I thought it was so much fun. It's my favorite live action film. It's the only live action film I think that's any good that Disney's done. And they've done a lot between then and now. That was their first. Sorry. But that's why he made it his. He told a story that had some components, but it did not trace. Please don't trace. Please. Do you have time to fix it? Fix it. Phone in their hair? No, Joe. No, no, no. No phone in the hair. Uh, too much emphasis on the modern movies uh, in the Warner Brothers, in the Disney 100 thing. That's what I said. That's exactly what is correct, too. Too much modern, not enough. Walt. Uh, all these cups of tea being mentioned is making me... <laughs> and you could have not shared that part. Just saying, Joe. Uh, I told I told Ashley it felt awkward watching it play out word for word from the animated film. Exactly. And she struggles, Joshua. She does that, that thing. She's got that thing where she's here and she's trying to make the hair go like this. And then she's trying to arch her back. Like you can feel her going, ow, 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 ah, ah, ow, ow, trying to do what Ariel the Mermaid did in animation, which is impossible. You know, impossible. So I, mm, painful. Didn't like they made Scuttle a blue footed booby. I understand it's because he can swim in the ocean now and be included underwater but I like him as a seagull. Uh, <laughs> of course, they're going to change that. You know, and that's the problem. You're going to trace everything and then you're not going to trace some components. So now those components are going to be the thing that you look at, right, Joshua? You're going to look at those components. Why is he a booby? He's a seagull. What's the big deal? I mean, if you can change the mermaid and make her break her back to make a copy, why can't you make this a seagull and put him underwater via CB? you know, CG, the seagull underwater. They might say seagulls don't, but seagulls do dive underwater, catch fish, by the way. They do. They do. And um, I mean, he may not live underwater, uh, but the point is, come on, guys, really? You're going to do that? I mean, seriously, we we really are not going to believe that the actress who, who plays Ursula actually has a tentacle body, all right? If you are, uh, Good for you is all I can say about that. If you believe he really, she really has that for real. Just use that CG like you always do. That's a good place for it. I did like one Jimmy Kendall joke last night when he said the visual effects nominees were going out for dinner at CGI Fridays. Yes, that was very cute. There were several I liked. There were several. There were several I found very funny, um, as my husband did too. I found stuff about the Oscars on YouTube last night. Good for you, Diane. Yes. I'm watching the Oscars on Hulu today. See, see, where there's a will, there's a way you'll really enjoy them. Uh, I love your Oscar review on Terry TV uh, the next day. Yes, I had to. We had to talk about this because it was so much fun. Yeah. First and foremost, I'm a huge Monty Python fan. Rest assured, I know what you're talking about. Good, good. Uh, I have seen Best in, I have not seen Best in Show, a must, okay? Turn off this channel right now and go watch that movie if you don't have to go to work. Go find it. Go see it. You will love it. Oh, there's some bits in there. You're going you're gonna to just go crazy. The B. I'm, only, I'm just going to say the B is brilliant. Um, uh, but I do plan to see it eventually so I can also put it on that list. Yes, go, go now. Do not pass go. Brilliant, brilliant. The menu was fantastic, says Joshua. Yeah, guys, you got to say, I really was upset when this movie didn't get nominated. This is one of the reasons I actually could nominate and win like 20 out of 23. I picked 20. Bob says 19, but I only missed three. So if there's 23, I, I got 23. Um, I did not vote for uh, 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 every everything everywhere all at once as best picture. I missed that one. I did vote for Michelle as best actress because you know she is i just think she's great i did vote for jamie lee curtis so i had the big ones but i had them for different reasons um and so uh you know yeah um but anyway the menu was amazing yes how you say you guys got to see this movie so brilliant and it has an incredible message so you may have to see it twice um 
It's on the list. It's on the menu. I, I, I have it. I have it. I have this movie already. Love this movie. Um, I'm well aware Disney owns ABC, says Joe. See, I told you. Told you you'd say that. No excuse to cut the Oscars with the promo for their movie. Oscars can be can decide not to renew their contract with ABC and get into a new contract, NBC, CS, Fox, or anyone else they want. Yeah, I think they're happy where they are, to be honest with you. I think they like where they are. They've always been comfy there. So, uh, I mean, well, not always. They've been on other channels. Of course they have. But uh, I think they're comfy there. It's just that you know you're going to be subject to some marketing on any channel. Any channel is going to market what they have, and any channel is going to market who their sponsors are, right? So you're going to get it from all, all angles anyway. Uh, record it and fast forward it. You won't have to experience it, Joe. Uh, yes, you can do it, Joshua. Yeah, that was the message of last night. You can do it. Never give up. My message? What? <laughs> it doesn't let me post more than one sentence. Oh, Mark, that's terrible. You may have to give uh, uh, StreamYard a little more permission. Um, that's what I'm going to suggest. And if you have trouble, go to Facebook. Uh, I'm broadcasting live on both and post all you want. Oh, there you go. See, you got it. I see lower. You got it. I'll try again. Nicole says, yeah, she, she thanked her hairstylist and she said she wasn't used to it and was hard, but she loved that they could do it for her. Exactly. But you see, as a, as a, as a hairstylist and a makeup artist, you, you know, it's not just doing the hair, not just, this is the thing that I would love to see more of. I'd love to hear more of is, is, you know, a hairstylist just doesn't do a blow and cut, right? They don't just blow your hair and let it fluff all over. If you're a good hairstylist, you know the type of hair, the texture of hair. You know that uh, people of color have hair that is just like uh, people who aren't people of color. Um, such a weird way to say it. But anyway, black people's hair gets thin and coarse and medium and thick. I, being of mixed races, have thick hair. Um, others don't. So a hairstylist has to know the hair of the person they're doing, what that hair can take, meaning when you're coloring it, when you're bleaching it, whatever you're doing, you have to know what the hair can take or the person you are doing it for will lose it, lose the hair. You also want to be sure that if someone wants to do this, okay, like the actress, Nicole, you're speaking of, she wants it, but maybe she hasn't ever had it piled up. So your first question is, have you ever had this piled up in your hair before? No. Okay. So now the hairstylist and the costume people, or the hairstylist and the makeup people have to know, because sometimes they're one and the same. That's why I say it twice like this. They have to know how to make it so she can survive because she's not going to be wearing that hairstyle for five minutes. She's going to wear it for probably five to eight hours, depending on whether she's partying or not. Now, maybe she could take it down, but it was such an iconic hairstyle. They probably thought she was not going to be able to take it down even if she wanted to. So you've got to protect the neck. I had all my hair piled up in my wedding photo. It did not nearly go as high. And I, they, they looked to protect my neck. It took three and a half hours for my hairstylist to get all of this up here. So yes, the weight is there. It's got to be considered. And um, I know she was happy and uh, she, she loved the, the work that was involved, but her neck is going to be tired today and hopefully she supports it and just nurses it gets a good massage and she'll be fine it was well worth it i agree with her well worth it but you got to be prepared for something like that what about tom hanks and walt he looked he looked let's see what about tom hanks as Walt the razzie uh he was up for worst actor in a in a motion picture unfortunately there was another movie that trumped that and the Razzie went to someone else, but he was nominated for it. And uh, uh, truth be told, yeah, in the accent, another one of those horrible accents, Mark. He looked nothing like him and sounded nothing like him. The kind of casting might work with more obscure celebrities, but not Walt Disney. I It just, yeah, no, sorry. Mm -mm. But uh, Tom Hanks, but what about Tom Hanks? At, uh, 
as Walt Disney. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying you didn't think he was that good as Walt Disney. Um, maybe they didn't believe they could get someone. I think the story itself would have been strong enough if they didn't cast Tom Hanks. Mark, sorry, I misunderstood your question or your statement. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, borderline, really borderline. Um, yeah, borderline. I remember sitting with Bob Gurr at a tea. They had a tea afterwards. It was really the best part. And he talked about some of the things that were true and some of the things that were false in that film. Uh, but yeah, that, mm, yeah. I. Mm. Well, who do you think would have made a good Walt Disney? Let me ask you that. Who do you think would have made a good Walt Disney? Two hours and three minutes. I'm going to have to go in a minute. I promised you 30 and gave you an hour. See how I am. Um, excuse me, Terry, how are your parents doing? Mike, they're doing, they're doing good. I'm getting to go see my father after COVID. Today's the day. So I'm getting ready to shoot up there. Yep. Um, instead of wasting millions of dollars, remaking the animated classics, live action, CGI, Disney should go just theatrically release their animated classics. Well, that would be great. And also they should, uh, create. This is my thing They Walt created he took a fairy tale and he created his version of that fairy tale. He took another fairy tale and a books that he loved, things that he loved and created his vision of them. Like them, don't like them. They were still Walt's vision and the group and the crew of animators that helped those visions come alive. So um, we loved it. We loved it. And we, they were Walt Disney pictures. So let's create both Henson company and Walt Disney Company, and any of you out there, just create, please, just create. Ta if you take one thing away from everything, everywhere, all at once, create like they did. Don't copy them, but create. Look at the permission you've got. Seven Academy Awards said, let's see more creativity in the film industry today. So let's do it. You've got this. Make it happen. Yes, 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 on Cinderella. See? See? Create. Tom Tom Selleck is Walt Disney. Really? Oh, that would have been interesting. Wow. What do you think about that one, Mark? Sure makes you think, doesn't it? Doesn't it make you think? Wow. Guys, we've gone two hours today. I knew we'd go long. I, I really have stuff to do, but I wanted to talk Academy Awards with you today because so much fun. And uh, uh, it's been a while since I have truly enjoyed uh, Academy Awards like I enjoyed these. And I have been watching them, like I say, since I was three years old. Uh, I do not do pools. I do not choose winners. Uh, I choose them, but I do it privately because that's me. That's that's me. So uh, uh, I'm proud and happy to say that I did well, and uh, but more importantly, they did. I fell in love with everything, everywhere, all at once because of the cast and the crew and the and the village. I love the village. I'd love to go visit that village of happy people. Um, but the movie was not to my taste. It just didn't resonate with me. And I've got to just know that that's the case. And the reason I tell you this is because it may not resonate with you either. But you cannot diss the fact that they had a great time and they let everyone know that this is the way sets should be done. Movies should be written. Things should be approached. Uh, love for your fellow man, whether you win or don't. Um, just have a good time. Enjoy it and make it for you. They made it for them. And uh, everybody fell in love with it except for <laughs> me. But uh, but anyway, guys, uh, congratulations on uh, all of the winners. And uh, like Leo says, so happy for Jamie Lee Curtis. Brendan Fraser, mwah, big kiss to you. Love you bunches. It's about time, Brendan Fraser. It's about time. I know you wouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it right here as we close. Brendan Fraser, it's about flipping time. Bruce Lenoyle and I knew you were the brilliant actor that you were. We've always known it, and we've been saying they needed to get a clue and get you up there. Kudos to the ones who did. So love hugs. We wish you a journey, yellow brick road, fame, fortune, joy, because you are one hell of a person. All right. Hey, Terry.
tagging you in a video I shared on my profile about how rodeos are not abusive to animals. Boy, did that take a left turn. Yay! Okay, thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, have a great week. Yay for the Oscar winners, she says. And tagged. Thank you. Guys, do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. If you are suffering from depression or you're feeling pain, remember what Lady Gaga says. You can be your own hero even when you're broken. So go out and do something nice for someone. It doesn't have to involve money. It can involve a call to someone you haven't talked to in a while. Um, standing in line and doing something nice for the person behind you. It used to be you used to put money in a meter when the meter was now. You can get in trouble for that. But just anything that you can think of is nice. Uh, in my case, the week after next, I'm going to go visit some people I haven't seen in a very, very long time. And I want to do that not because I want to be nice, but because I want some of their kindness and I know we're going to do good for each other. I'm not depressed either, but I am challenged. We all are. So remember that Lady Gaga, I love you. Love to do lunch sometime simply because you're such a magical person, a real creator. And uh, I love you for that. And to everything, everywhere, all at once, congratulations for being some of the coolest people I've ever seen on the stage to date. Love, hugs. I will see you soon. Um, be well.